Hey everyone, I finished watching the next Dino Thunder episode, Legacy of Power. This is an episode I've been both looking forward to and dreading, because in the past I've really not liked this episode, and I was really hoping that this time around watching Dino Thunder that my opinion would improve of it. Some of my opinion has improved. I think the first two episodes are amazing. Like, some of the best premiere like, episodes that Power Rangers has ever done. The third episode was kind of standard and basic, didn't really do anything too impressive. There were some things I thought could have been uh, improved on a lot, but overall, it was an okay third episode. This one, though, I don't know, I'm kind of split about it. There's some things that I think it, like, more, I appreciate the premise of this episode more than the episode itself. The episode itself, I think, falls completely flat. It's not well done at all. <laughs> um, but I think the idea is there. The idea there is good. Dino Thunder has a lot of things that, like, in theory, it feels like, yeah, I think that could work, but in execution, it just falls apart completely, and I'm I'm not a big fan of how this episode was handled and put together, and I especially don't like Haley. This is the episode that made me really hate Haley. Like, in all of Dino Thunder, if this scene, or if Haley just wasn't in this episode at all, I think my opinion of her would probably be higher, but as it is, she is just the most insufferable character in all of Power Rangers. Like, just absolute poison. I cannot stand her at all. I, I don't like looking at her, I don't like listening to her, and that's probably one of the big reasons why I've never cared for Dino Thunder in the past, because especially later on, I seem to remember her playing a bigger role. Uh, and I'm, I'm, she's exhausting, anyway. Uh, the plot to this episode is pretty minimal, like, most of it's just the rangers watching stuff happen. There's not much in the way of plot, so a lot of the analysis stuff, usually I'd save most of that for the end, but this time it's worked into the summary itself. And, um, let's see. Oh, one of the things I want to say about this episode before I get into, like, the actual summary and analysis and all that is I was watching the theme song and thinking about, you know, I really appreciate that Dino Thunder didn't do the same thing that Ninja Storm did with their theme song where it opened with narration. For one thing, it helps, uh, there's no awkwardness if new rangers are added in or things change up. The theme song can stay the same and they don't have to, like, go in and change anything other than the visuals. Um, so yeah, on into the actual episode. So it starts off with a black screen and the words commemorating 500 episodes. May the power live on forever. And that's kind of a cool way to start this uh, special episode, although it is kind of undermined by the stock music. It leads right into that crappy Disney stock music. I hate that music. Get used to me saying that. I'll say it a lot. And I don't care. They're the ones who play it every episode multiple times. So I don't think it's a problem for me to criticize it multiple times. Not that it'll do any good. It's not like Disney or whoever the sound editors or music people or whoever made the decision to put it in there cares what I think, like, uh, nearly 20 years later. Whatever, anyway... We see Mesagog zapping a stone with that forehead beam that he used to torture Elsa and Zeltrax a few episodes ago. Huh, that actually comes back. Neat. Still no explanation of why he can do that. Like, he's a dinosaur. Is that a thing dinosaurs do? Can they zap things with their forehead? I guess dinosaurs could. Anyway... Zeltrax drags Tommy into Mesagog, and Tommy is strapped down while Mesagog explains what he wants to do with him. He wants Tommy's help to harness the power of that stone he was zapping. Then the rangers are in Dr. O's lab, wondering where he is. Uh, Ethan decides to look into his computer for possible clues. He logs in and finds a video message, and it details Tommy's history as a power ranger, kind of. Complete with video footage for every team. That's weird. And, uh, you know, this has always been a weird thing that a lot of fans have wondered about. Where did all the footage on the on, in the video come from? And my assumption is, well, probably Alpha gave it to him. Tommy was hanging out with Andros and whichever Alpha robot that was on the Astro Megaship Mark II. So maybe Alpha had all that footage just around or something. 
Let's see, I'm trying... Oh, yeah, in that Alien Encounters and Angel Grove book, the guy who wrote it pretended it was, like, a real thing, and that all the images came from files that Alpha had. It's magic and technology together. A space wizard did it, basically. So, anyway. Or, maybe Tommy knew the Morphin Masters, and they gave him all this stuff. Moving on. Uh, let's see, blah, 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 blah. Tommy makes the common mistake that the original rangers had dinosaur powers. Trini and Zack did not have dinosaur powers. They had prehistoric animal powers. Mastodons and saber-toothed tigers were not dinosaurs, but little nitpick. Who cares? Um, it's, I don't know. It's, not, it's probably not even worth bringing up, but whatever. Anyway, then he explains Zordon assembling the team, Rita recruiting him, and then, uh, let's see. Oh yeah, there's a weird audio error here that I I have noticed in the past, but I never really thought too deep about it. When we see evil Tommy Green Ranger fighting with the other rangers, he makes these, like, grunts and growls, and they sound a lot like Goldar's noises. Especially early on in Mighty Morphin, Goldar had, like, a lot of raspy growl noises. And those are the noises Tommy makes here. That's weird. Kind of weird. They didn't just use Jason Franks. Like, he's narrating all this stuff. If they didn't have the right audio there, it seems like, hey, could you, like, do your evil laugh and or something? Like, I know they know it because it shows up later in Dino Thunder and Fighting Spirit. Anyway, uh, let's see. Da -da 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 -da. There's a funny thing where he calls the Sword of Darkness just the Power Sword, which is... A mistake that Zack made way back in that original episode, too. And it's kind of weird, because now, like, the Green Ranger episodes are so popular, everybody knows the Sword of Darkness is its proper name. But I guess back then, it wasn't really all that important of a detail. So it didn't matter, just call it Power Sword, who cares? <laughs> anyway, um, da, 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 look at my notes here. Oh yeah, one of the things I noticed while watching it this time, the music seems to be mixed louder than usual in the old scenes. Like... I've seen the old scenes here, like, on my other DVDs, on tape, and I have VCDs and Blu-rays and all that fun stuff, and, but here in Legacy of Power, I've noticed a lot of uh, audio problems, I'll talk about that a little later, but yeah, it's really weird, I've never really thought too much about it, like, I've heard the music in this episode and the audio in this episode, and, like, I never, I just never really thought about it being off or whatever, um... Oh, one nice thing, though, even if the music is kind of loud or it comes in fuzzy once in a while, I don't really care, uh, it's better than the stock music. The drone's on forever, so welcome change from that, I guess. Then, uh, let's see, da, 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 da. oh yeah, when Zordon talks in this, he sounds more garbled than usual. Like, when he's introducing Tommy as the White Ranger, Tommy the White Ranger, like, it's really garbled, like, more than usual. It's really weird. I don't know... What happened? It kind of sounds like they're recording through a phone, and that made me wonder, like, were all the audio elements not available in their New Zealand studio or wherever they were putting the, the sound together? Did they have to call up some warehouse in California and be like, oh, hey, we need this line of dialogue from Zordon, and so they, like, held their phone next to a TV or something? Possibly. Like, there's definitely some... uh. Like, in Power Rangers, there's quite a few times, like, surprising, just unprofessionalism. Like, there's times where I'll look at something in the show and be like, wow, I can't believe they actually made it to TV. Like, from the beginning, all the way till even now, there's, like, just the weirdest mistakes and errors and things that seem like they could easily be fixed, or things that they just seem to intentionally thought this was a good idea and, and did it. Like, and this is another thing, all the stock footage that shows up in this episode, uh, nearly all of it is just the normal original footage audio. There's no alt there's no major alteration, there's no dubbing people over, re-looping dialogue with anybody else, there's not, like, stupid, terrible, cringe voice actors taking over the original voices like they do now and continue to do for some reason. So that's all very nice. I, I, I appreciate... The, they were able to just take old clips and play them without much uh, 
alteration. They didn't George Lucas special edition everything. So anyway, uh, Ethan pauses the video message to let all this new information sink in. And then Connor has a weird line. Oh, wow, I'm ten minutes in and I've barely gotten into the episode, whatever. This is going to be a long one, probably. Connor, for some reason, says, Our teacher is the oldest living Power Ranger. Which is kind of weird, like, does he mean all the other Power Rangers are dead? Because, <laughs> like, they're barely into Mighty Morphin at this point. Tommy's a teenager, everybody else is a teenager. What led him to the assumption that Tommy is the oldest? Anyway, then Haley comes in and she's like, Not the oldest, just the best. Yep. So, uh, oh, she's with Cole, I guess. Cole also thinks Tommy's the best. Anyway, or at least the greatest Red Ranger. Uh, so then she tells the others that she's been helping Tommy to create the Dino Thunder powers because Tommy can't do that on his own, even though he seemed to have a handle on everything the first three episodes pretty well. And then she shows them the surveillance footage of Tommy getting kidnapped last episode, and Connor says, why doesn't he morph? He's a Power Ranger. Yeah, I wondered that too. And then Haley says, well, he's not a Ranger anymore, or didn't you get that far? And then she, yeah, she implies the video message will explain why Tommy doesn't have his powers. It doesn't. It never does. It they, There's never anything that shows Tommy losing, and like, he loses his Green Ranger powers. They lose the Thunder Zords, which uh, I guess implies they lose their, uh, their white, or yeah, the those powers, and then... They show the ninja powers. They don't explicitly say they're gone. Oh, wait, no. Yeah, they do. There is the clip of the command center being destroyed and Tommy saying we lost our powers. But then they get the Zeo powers, which are never shown being destroyed or lost or anything. They just upgrade to the turbo powers. Upgrade. The turbo powers aren't lost either. Not by them. They hand them off to the next team and I'll get to this. Back to this thing. I'll go into all that garbage at the end, I guess, so... The video message resumes, detailing uh, Lord Zed, Jason, Zack, and Trini being replaced by Rocky, Adam, and Aisha. And there's a neat little thing here that nobody ever talks about and no one ever mentions, and I don't know why, because I always thought it was a kind of a fascinating thing. Uh, when Tommy turns around in the stock footage and sees Rocky, Adam, and Aisha, he goes, Rocky, Adam! And that's in the original version. In this one, they add in another line, Aisha! But he's not, we don't see him, he's facing away when he, they add in the Aisha. So for whatever reason, the sound people thought that it was really important that we know all three of their names, Rocky, Adam, and Aisha, and also that Tommy has to say them. Actually, they might have added in the Aisha just, like, when they were doing this episode and they had Jason Frank there. I never thought about that. So anyway, um, I thought that was interesting that in the original he just calls Rocky and Adam by name. But in the new one, or in the Legacy of Power, they decided he needed to also say Aisha's name. Which will get really weird later on, because there's a bizarre set of priorities for who gets named and who gets, like, just totally ignored. <laughs> so then the video skips ahead to Rito's arrival. And, um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Ninja is introduced with the ninja powers. And there's a scene of the Rangers fighting the Tangas. And we even get the Ron Wasserman Tanga Bye Bye song. That's awesome. And it's also strange that apparently in this episode, there were no complication with the music rights at all. Which will be really weird in the next couple of seasons and on into especially the Neo Saban seasons when it comes to use, usage of the music. Like, it was fine here to use all this different type of music from across hundreds of episodes from a decade ago, but now it's a problem, apparently. Anyway, back to this thing. Uh, let's see, da, 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 da. Cat taking Kim's place is shown. Then it skips right to Zio. No Tanya. Like, Tanya's there, but they don't call her by name ever. The alien rangers are just completely omitted. They're not important at all, I guess. They don't mention the rangers getting turned into kids. Also, Bulk and Skull get zero mention in this. Kind of weird. And also a lot of the villains are skipped over. 
like, Goldar's noises, I think, are used, but we don't see much of Goldar. He doesn't get named. I think there's, like, a quick little clip of him at the beginning when they're talking about Mighty Morphin. Anyway, after Zeo... Um, let's see. Okay, there it is. So, they mentioned Jason becoming the Gold Ranger, and but then when he's morphed, they're playing footage from before Jason comes in to be the Gold Ranger, because the Gold Ranger is making... Uh, it's Brad Jones, it's Brad Hawkins' voice. Why did I say Brad Jones, cinema snob? <laughs> that would have been interesting if Brad Jones was the Gold Ranger. <laughs> anyway, back to Zio. No mention of anything else in Zio, just uh, Jason coming back to be the new Gold Ranger. And then that's it. Then we skip up to uh, Turbo, and then there's a weird little switch up in continuity. Uh, Tommy says they graduated and then became Turbo Rangers. Actually, it's the other way around. The Turbo movie came before the series, and the first episode of the series was about their graduation. Oh, and there's also no mention of what happened to Billy. They show Billy stays around in Zeo after they get their powers, but they don't mention anything about Billy uh, having, like, leaving or anything. So, yeah, screw you, Billy, I guess. <laughs> um, oh, and then there's a weird thing. Tommy mentions Turbo being their last adventure, which... I guess kind of, if you consider everything from the movie up until uh, when they leave and passing the torch, one adventure. Uh, there's a, One of the big problems with this is it just simplifies things way too much. It's, it's way too brief at times, I think. Or, or Then there's other times where they'll bring up something that just seems kind of pointless, and I don't really get what the why it was necessary to bring this up but not this other thing. Back to this... Um, Justin pops in, guys, I'm the new Blue Ranger, but he never gets named. Justin doesn't get a name. Meanwhile, TJ, Cassie, Ashley, and Carlos, they all get a name. Not you, Justin, screw you, I guess. And then we jump into Demetria introducing uh, them as new Rangers. No explanation of who Demetria is, and also no mention of Alpha 6 or anything from Turbo besides Divatox. And... I was wondering... Because I've heard from a lot of people that Dino Thunder was their first season. The first series that they watched uh, way back in 2004, I think, or 5, whatever. Um, were any new fans completely confused by this episode? Because I, I can't imagine being a new fan who knows nothing about the previous seasons of Power Rangers. Maybe I've only seen, like, the, the movie with Ivan Ooze, which isn't in continuity with the series and is completely looked over in this thing. Um... Oh, and the Turbo movie. You know, the scenes they show from Turbo, the movie, I think were the same scenes that were shown in the show, so there's probably not a rights problem with those with that footage. Anyway, back to uh, what I was saying about, like, new fans. Were they completely confused who this woman with the white veil was? And why is uh, Alpha down there in the corner? Why does he look completely different? What's going on? Because I can't imagine being a new fan who knows nothing about Power Rangers, seeing all this, and being and being able to follow any of this. Anyway, after that, I guess maybe the director, whoever realizes, is getting a little, like, fast-paced. So then uh, Haley pauses the video to explain that after Turbo, Tommy went to college and met her. And that's when they started making the Dino Thunder powers. And, oh yeah, she says that he found the Dino Gems and wanted to do something with those. Why? I don't know. <laughs> And then Kira, um, oh yeah, this is a really weird part. Kira mentions Invisiportals. They might be able to use an Invisiportal to uh, use to find Dr. O and bring him back. And I was thinking, it's really weird to bring those up considering they only showed up that one time and they got no explanation. And then there's a weird part. Kira says that the Invisiportals are all over the city. How does she know that? What's been going on off screen? And I'm wondering, was this episode not meant to be here? Was this meant to be a little later on in the series? Because it is kind of soon to be dropping all this info and <laughs> dropping all this information. This is like back in Power Rangers in Space, where two episodes in they meet the Ninja Turtles, <laughs> something wacky, crazy like that, and it's right at the beginning of the season. And I'm wondering. Did someone notice that, holy crap, 500 episodes, we should do something special. That, that clip show thing, let's move that to here. And then, yeah, I don't know. Is that what 
happened? Probably. It was probably something like that. So anyway, um, not that the Invisi portals matter at all, because they don't use them in this episode at all, ever. Haley just says that uh, the Invisi portals are something she's been working on, but she needs more time. And then she tells the Rangers to watch some more of their heritage. They might learn something, and I really hate how condescending she sounds here. <clears throat> how... I'm out of breath for some reason. I hate how condescending she sounds here, especially considering the stuff she'll say later. I don't know, I just... This kind of attitude from Haley, I'm not a fan of. Too many people I've known in my life act like this and just hate me for some reason. Like, people who just, I don't know, they have this weird smugness about them and that's how Haley comes across. And I don't know if it was written this way or directed that way, but that's how it comes across, and it's very uncomfortable to me. Moving on, Tommy in the video message explains the end of Turbo and the beginning of In Space. And there's a really weird line here where Tommy says uh, the line between friend and foe was a thin one, as we see Andros mistaking the Rangers for bad guys. And this scene, out of context, I'm wondering, did this make anybody think Andros was a villain or something? It's really weird, or it makes Andros sound like he's not a, like, a friendly character, like that he's constantly being an antagonistic character or something. It's really weird, I don't know why the line, friend and foe, is a thin one. Like, I would think that maybe the line was meant to imply the story with Astronema and Andros, how she's actually his sister Corone. Spoilers, sorry, I guess. But they completely skip over that. In fact, uh, it ends with, um, Tommy saying Astronema was defeated. <laughs> okay. Anyway, then they also introduce Zane. Thanks? Was he really that important? Not really, he never ever comes back again. So then on to Lost Galaxy, where each of the main five rangers get named. And again, I wonder, what was the priority with naming here? I'm trying to remember, does An- Yeah, I think Andros gets named, doesn't he? I don't remember now. Uh, so anyway, da, 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 da. Scorpius is completely skipped over. Tommy just says that uh, uh, they fight their villain, Trichina. No mention of Magna Defender, either of them. No mention of Corone. That's not important at all, I guess. Yeah, Lost Galaxy is just zipped right through really quick for some reason. So then Lightspeed Rescue is next. And a weird thing I noticed, Captain Mitchell had a weird distortion on his voice that's not there in the original episode. And I wondered... Did the sound mixer think, like, oh, Captain Mitchell is a mentor. Well, he needs a garbled voice like Zordon. Maybe? I don't know. Or it was just an audio error or something. Who knows? Ryan the Titanium Ranger is introduced, and then Haley pauses the video to show the Rangers something she found. Uh, it shows the forest, and she says, it's Mesagog's firewall, and it will lead to an Invisi portal. Thanks? What does any of this have to do with... Why is this relevant at all? This doesn't... It interrupts the flow. It's not important. It never means anything. What's... What What do you mean firewall? Like, on a computer? Or is... Does she mean, like, a reality barrier? Like in VR Troopers? The, there's nothing there! It's It's the woods! Anyway, thanks for wasting a few seconds of screen time that could have gone to the Alien Rangers or something, I guess. So then we shift focus to Mesagog pontificating to Tommy. It doesn't really establish any new information, it's just here to remind us that Tommy's in a predicament. This is a fan favorite episode, by the way. Okay. Back at Dr. O's lab, the video message resumes. Time Force is next. We see the time ship fly by, and Ethan goes, Wow, nice spaceship. Which I was going to say something stupid about, but he wouldn't know it's a time machine and not a spaceship, so whatever. Then Kira is like, Oh, wow, Ranger with time travel. If we could contact them, they could take us back in time and stop Dr. O from getting kidnapped. Oh, and also Connor says something stupid during this because 
he has to be the Kelso of the group, I guess, this time. So they watch through the Time Force segment, and there's a funny little bit where Dr. O refers to Eric as a modern-day hero, but it took him time to learn to whatever, I don't remember what he said, to be a real hero, whatever. They don't. He doesn't say anything about Wes, even though they do show him getting his morpher for the first time. There's no resolution for Time Force. I guess they just didn't feel like talking about Rancic becoming a good guy or whatever. So anyway... Oh, this scene is next, and I don't I don't like this one. Connor questions why they can't find any of these old rangers and ask them for help. And I, I don't like Haley. This is the reason why. She says most rangers don't have their powers anymore. Most never wanted them at all. I really want to think that the crew behind this episode loved Power Rangers and all the little nitpicks I've had are just the result of putting together a clip show of hundreds of episodes from across nearly a decade. Then there's that line, and... Like, I'm not sure if it was just a cheap excuse as to why there aren't more occasional cameos to past Rangers, or if it was actively trying to demean everything that came before... Because, like, it's absolutely wrong. Tommy, best ranger, is in this show. One of Dino Thunder's main characters, the one who put together this clip show in the context of this episode, is a former ranger. And I've yet to see the explanation from this video about why Tommy doesn't have his powers anymore. Then there's the line, most never wanted their powers, which is particularly insulting as a longtime fan who grew up with these shows, and I considered these characters my heroes. This whole th and the weird thing with Power Rangers is, for whatever reason, it's not really viewed the same as typical superhero things, whether it be shows or comics or books or video games, whatever. Power Rangers is this weird outlier that just isn't considered superhero for whatever reason, and I don't know why. But the thing I would compare this to is, like, imagine if DC came out with a superhero movie and had a completely new team. Think like Teen Titans, but just completely new original characters. And then a little ways into the movie, this new character shows up who says, that, oh, hey, I'm a friend of Superman. And uh, the other characters are like, oh, well, there's some bad guys attacking. Can, uh, like, can we go and try and find some of the Justice League or the Teen Titans or, or somebody? And this new person is like, no, they don't have their powers anymore, and most never wanted their superpowers anyway. Like, I know that, yeah, this applies to some characters, definitely. There's some superheroes who don't want their powers, or like, I don't know, say in Batman's case, he doesn't want the responsibility of being de a detective who dresses like a bat and glides around and has a bunch of weird gadgets. Whatever. Um... I just don't know why they thought this was a good thing to put in your, like, special 500th episode anniversary celebration of the show, saying that most characters in this show didn't want the thing that's the premise of the whole show, superpowers to fight bad guys. And so then, like, in my notes, I wrote down a crap ton of stuff, like, examples of rangers who definitely wanted their powers, or at the very least, by the end of the show, like, appreciated having the powers, or, like, in light speed, they hand their powers in, and then take them back so they can continue their mission, even the, or, well, being rangers, even though their initial mission as rangers was defeat Banshira and Diabolico and all those idiots, and then they see, oh no, there's a fire, so then they get their suits all together, I don't know if they have their morphers or whatever, but, yeah, they're still going into battle. Or, well, to stop any emergency from going on. Uh, anyway. Back to the thing. The video message continues with Wild Force. This is the last season where Tommy used his Zeo powers. Will we finally get that explanation about why he can't morph? No, we don't. 
Cole and Merrick are introduced by name, the premise of Wild Force is briefly laid out, then it ends. Haley mentions, I thought there was at least one more team. Yeah, the Wild West Rangers. No, it's, uh, oh yeah, Connor suggests Ninja Storm. I guess Tommy hadn't finished editing together his video yet, because <laughs> he has a segment for Ninja Storm, but it's not included with the others, whatever. Anyway, it's here that Connor mentions his twin brother going to secret ninja school and didn't finish, which, like, it's a cute reference, but on the other hand, it does kind of undermine that character that you're supposed to be referencing. Like, those characters, including his twin brother, were supposed to represent, like, the good of humanity and how... Like, even without ranger powers, people will still rise up to, like, defend people from evil. And then, he dropped out. I don't really know how to think about that. It's I've never seen character assassination done to such a minor character as an easter egg before. I'm probably thinking way too deep about this, and it doesn't actually matter at all. For some reason, Connor's dialogue here is treated as humorous. There's, like, goofy music playing in the background the whole time. Okay. I don't get it. So anyway, Haley mentions that she knows of Cam. That doesn't mean anything. And then the Ninja Storm segment plays, and... Oh, wow, Disney's stock music is in it again. Whoopee. The Thunder Rangers arc is quickly zipped through, followed by Cam getting his powers... And then for the first time in the video since M MMPR, Tommy explicitly states that a team of rangers lost their powers. Yeah, that was one of the weird things with Haley saying that the old rangers don't have their powers anymore. That is such a cheap excuse. Like, no, a lot of them still have their powers. In space, they still have their powers. The turbo powers are still partially out there. Justin has his morpher back. Storm Blaster, like, or Mountain Bla whichever th blaster it was, had his Morpher and it was fine. It fixed it or something. The Mighty Morphin powers are, like, presumably okay. Jason had his power coin. Or he had something before he got stuck in a meteor or whatever. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I'm not going to bother going through all the continuity, whatever. Moving on. Ethan gets a little giddy now knowing ninjas are real, even though ninjas were at the beginning of the video, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Connor then decides to be more of a kill, so... I know something stupid we can do! And then he, like, kicks and the computer disables. And it made me think... Oh, yeah, when he says that, he says, I'll show you some ninja moves my brother taught me. And I thought, oh, ninja moves! The name of those dumb bonus features around all those Ninja Storm DVDs. And the Dino Thunder DVDs. Huh. Was that a reference to those Ninja Moves videos? Because if that's the case, then... Good one. Good one. So anyway, uh, turns out his kicking the computer was a good thing, and now uh, it helped. Yeah, so now they know where Tommy is. And then the final message from Tommy plays on the video message, showing the Dino Thunder Rangers, and the Rangers get a boost of confidence, just as Haley is able to pinpoint Tommy's location. And that's where it ends. So, I was really hoping this episode, my opinion of it, would improve this time around, and I think I hate it more than before. <laughs> I appreciate the effort of this episode, and especially when I was younger, I watched this episode a lot, although it wasn't really for the reasons I think the creators wanted it to be, I watched this episode a lot because I was interested in seeing all these clips of the old rangers. Because I didn't have all the episodes on tape or DVD. Actually, I didn't have any DVDs at all. I had the Ninja Storm DVDs, I had Best of Power Rangers, and that was about it. Then I had a bunch of Power Rangers stuff on tape. I had a ton of Mighty Morphin Season 1 and 2, nearly every episode on tape. I had, let's see, the Zeo Christmas episode... I think there was a few, yeah, there was a few Zeo episodes scattered around on some tapes along with Beetleborgs. And then Turbo, I had some stuff. I had the movie on tape, which I thought was boring. I had the In Space tape that summed up the Psycho Ranger arc and cut that little girl out that hangs around Carlos. Good job there. Uh, I had, did I have Lost, yeah, I think I had some Lost Galaxy. I don't remember now. I think I had the one with Magna Defender. Lightspeed Rescue, I had the Titanium Ranger tape, and I'm sure I had 
like a few other episodes here and there somewhere. Time Force, I had the end of time tape. Later on, I got the uh, Force from the Future, the first one with the premiere episodes. Wild Force, I had the first tape. And, um, uh, oh yeah, that's the one I had Forever Red on DVD. So yeah, I had a bunch of Power Rangers on DVD, but not all of it. So there was major parts of stories that I was missing. And this was a cool way to be able to see some of that, because like before YouTube and video clips were pretty common. Unfortunately, one of the things I think really holds this episode back is kind of how slapped together it feels. Like like I said, some characters are named and some aren't. Um, and also, one of the weird things I never really thought about before, after Turbo, there's, n there's no explanation of how or why Tommy knows all of this. Like, I'm guessing he got briefed by Andros or Carter or Alpha... Like, I keep going back to Forever Red, but Forever Red is completely absent from this, and I wouldn't be surprised if the writers just completely didn't know or forgot Forever Red happened, because they never do get around to explaining why, why Tommy can't morph. And so how does he know all this? Like, I And one of the things I wondered, since this is for Dino Thunder, why isn't this from, like, Tommy's perspective? Like, all these other seasons, like... He shouldn't know all these characters' names. Like, he doesn't say the names of the places often either. Like, I was thinking, after he leaves in Turbo, he talks a little bit about uh, the Rangers going to space, they meet Andros or whatever, and... But... I don't know. It's just weird. Like, it feels slapped together after Turbo, because it's just Tommy giving some... Br very brief summaries of each season, some information about them. But it, it's not relevant at all. These characters aren't going to come back, and if we're to believe Haley, they don't want to come back, or they don't have their powers anymore. So what's even the point of, like, keeping a, a record of all this stuff, if it doesn't matter? I don't know. Is that a nihilistic way to look at things, or to look at the way what Haley meant, like, it just, it feels nihilistic to me, that, like, nothing matters, Why, what was even the point of all this anyway, I feel like they probably should have peppered in some of Tommy's backstory, like, the whole thing in Dino Thunder is a completely made-up new story for him, about him going to college, meeting Haley, working with, uh, frickin' Anton Mercer, and doing crap with dinosaurs, or creating the Tyranna drones and the Raptor Riders, and all that good stuff. We don't get any information about that. It seems like some of that should have been in here. Why is he talking about Lightspeed, Time Force, Wild Force, seasons that, for the most part, he had nothing to do with, while he had his own interesting stuff going on, developing his own Power Ranger powers? So, whatever. Um... Going through my notes here. Uh, yeah, one of the things with this episode, I think this episode probably worked a lot better at the time it was made. Looking back at it, it hasn't really aged particularly well, because in this age, we don't... Like, like I was saying at the beginning of everything, one of the reasons I watched this episode like at all a lot was because I wanted to catch glimpses of all these old teams that I liked, and I wanted to see more of. Now, though, we don't really need a clip show. We, we can find episodes, like, on DVD, some of it's on Netflix, most of it's on YouTube now. Or, at least, yeah, all of these seasons that are summarized here are on YouTube, including this one. It's an interesting time capsule of how the franchise was viewed at this time, and I'm sure this episode served as a lot of younger fans' introduction to seasons that came before, and I commend it for that. I, I do kind of think they should do something similar to this now, but not as, like, just an actual episode of the series, like, maybe as a side special thing or something. Uh, yeah. That's about it. I hope this hasn't led everyone to hate me. This is definitely my most unpopular opinion, my opinion on Dino Thunder. Most fans consider Dino Thunder to be, like, the absolute best season, and if we're talking about the premiere, yeah, I like the premiere. I thought it was really, really well done, and I can definitely understand why fans would like it based on that, but since the premiere episodes, I'm not really seeing what fans liked about it. My opinion hasn't really improved much on it. I still don't really care for the Rangers. I don't really care for the villains. I don't like that they made up a completely new backstory for Tommy for no reason. I don't like this episode either, which is a fan favorite.
And, yeah. Hopefully, though, I've laid out my problems and my opinions so that even if someone doesn't agree with me, they still kind of get where I'm coming from. Similar to, like, years ago, Ricky Lehman uh, has said a few times that he didn't like Power Rangers RPM, a very popular series among fans, and a lot of fans questioned him about why he didn't like it. Nearly every episode, if he brought up RPM, and especially if he brought it up as a negative example, fans would question him, and so he did like a 40-some minute long video talking about all of his problems he had with RPM, and while I don't agree with some of them, I get where he's coming from. There were certain things with the characters he didn't like, certain things with the tone or whatever, certain things like uh, like the theme song. He hated the theme song, which is understandable. I don't like the RPM theme song either. But I think he did a decent job of laying out a lot of his problems. And I know I haven't watched that video in years now, but I don't know if this will come across similar to that. Oh, well, anyway. I've been going on for a really, really long time. So, uh... That's it for this one, I guess. See ya.